which makes this also an official ITF meeting, so the note well applies, and if there's anything unclear about it, um, please talk to Francesco or me. Um, that being said, um, there has been some discussion on the topic of ordered maps on the mailing list recently. My understanding is that this is something that there is interest in the working group um, to have this, especially with respect to SIBO being a more general format that um, that general purpose languages can use to serialize their, uh, their data items. Um, Right now, the documents that are around there are more more um, out of the working group um, suggestion texts. So, is there is are there is there anyone who would in concrete would want to work on this as a as a working group document or start something that could become a working group document? So, um, I already have uh, some embryonic text on the the other map tags in the notable tags uh, document. I don't remember how far I got in writing this. So for me, that would be uh, a natural thing to add there. Uh, so we would just uh, identify the contributors here mm -hmm. uh, and uh, just add it to that draft. But that, that's not the only way <laughs> to, to skin this cat. Oh, sorry, I made a non-vegetarian remark. <laughs> uh, I, th um, I think it's fine. So there is some text, right? Uh, I, I mean, I've not really followed super closely, um, but I've seen some text from Keo and Joe. Yeah, Joe has submitted a pull request to Kios text, so they have essentially merged their text now. Mm -hmm. So we could register it from that uh, GitHub page, or we could regi register it from the, the draft that isn't even the working group uh, draft yet. So it's the stability grade is, is probably approximately the same. It would be better to have a draft. Good. Yeah, so I, I just paste it in and format it uh, in a way that, that fits the rest of, of that draft. And I think you, we, we can have that well before uh, one ten, so we can look at that and, and then at one ten decide how to do this. So the, the, for me, the interesting observation is that th there are two uh, objectives here. One is the objective to actually be able to, to tag a map as order preserving. And the other objective is to work with platforms that have two different map types. And uh, of course, the, depending on, on how these map types actually look like, um, it, it may be, you may want to have different properties of, of the tags. So for instance, we ha already have one tag that uh, just says um, all the keys in this map are text strings. So somebody who wants to, to map this to um, platforms that, that have maps with text strings like JavaScript objects, uh, th that's a hint that they don't have to go for the full uh, JavaScript map uh, treatment. <coughs> but that, that, that's a bit of a weird situation because the default map yeah. in Ziba then, then goes to the more expensive uh, uh, platform type. I, th I think, but I think default default uh, behaviors will be just as as tricky with with the order preserving map just um, as well because different languages have different defaults and different native types for ma mappings and occasionally change the semantics just in yeah. between versions. <clears throat> Python. 
There's there's also the order preserving bag, also known as a list, uh, which uh, people occasionally are asking for. So you can have duplicates. Isn't that just a list? Yes, but in, in a list you cannot talk about keys and values. So saying this is really a key value uh, thing uh, makes the difference between just uh, putting this as an array. So like like a sparse like a sparse array. Yeah, but it's called a list in in uh, languages that that have a Lisp uh, okay. inheritance. Okay, I think the, the only really interesting or difficult question here is how many of these do we want to have and uh, which of these is actually worth going for a 1.1 1 .1 or uh, 1 plus 1 or even a 1 plus 0 uh, tag. Yeah. And th that's, of course, very much a judgment call. So, um, yeah, it's not, not we don't have a corpus of, of documents we can just run against that and say, oh, it's an obvious technical decision that we don't want to do this or that we want to do that. Do we have requirements or or uh, requests from anywhere in the constrained um, constrained area where people where people want to use something that is not a native seaboard type? Because things like serializing a na native Python or Perl or whatsoever language object is not something that would typically um, go into the constraint domain that we usually preserve the, the small types for. Well, Alex has talked about uh, ordered maps a lot. He has not talked about ordered bags as far as I know. Oh, <laughs> Multi-maps is the right word here. OK. Um... I think it would be good here uh, to to put, ask him directly to well where he sees the use case for this because if what I what I've seen on the mailing list from him is was was a yes we need this but no concrete um, we need this for so we need short we need short text with it but then again given where given what he's working with chances are there is a there is a constrained use case. Okay, so I think for me putting this stuff into notable tags. Um, the stuff, yes. Um, and for me to ask ask um, Alex Alexei and uh, to ask Alex and and uh, the wider group about priorities in terms of of sizes. Great. Um, any, any any other points on the on the map types? Um, Michael just before mentioned that he would run a bit late, so I'd postpone the the file magic and network uh, network address topics to when he's here, um, which makes the next topic a CDDL control. Is there anything I mean, I've seen? There is the new document. I've got to be honest. I'm not completely up to date what the um, what the what the updates there were. Um, Carsten, can you give a one sentence summary? And is there anything more that you want to mention there? Uh, <laughs> I actually have to look it up. <laughs> Typically, oh, okay. the, the, so, the so, documents okay. that are done on on the last day <laughs> that, uh, that fall out of my memory immediately again. <laughs> completely understandable. <laughs> Yeah, so the, the, I think the with CDI control, it's pretty clear we, we have implementations for .cat and .plus, uh, and um, we have at least one 
uh, document uh, in the ITF that actually uses that feature to, to great uh, benefit. So I think these three we could just uh, uh, finish. And uh, the, the question really is, uh, um, do we wait for the ABNF tags, which are obviously more work to, to get right? Do we wait for these to, to also be implemented or do we just uh, say, okay, let's do these three first and the other ones a little bit later? What's the timeline of the ITF document that uses that feature? Well, we, oh, this is SPF, and, and we, we do want to okay. uh, complete it this year. And you can't get a diff from the data tracker HTML, HTMLized version. And the tools version is frozen. Mm. But that from from a timeline perspective sounds to me like ABNF would be a candidate for postponing postponing unless uh, an urgent use case comes up okay so the the action point for me is to just split the draft um at, le at least that's my that's 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 my personal direction here um is so um i i'd say i'd say yes but um with no urgency so if if this only happens say some sometime uh, after the itf possibly around april or so um that would give a bit of time to for for abnf use cases to come up and if they don't well it's not a matter of use cases we have tons of use cases it's a matter of somebody sitting down and implementing it and Andrew Weiss has started, I have started, but we are not yet in a stage where we would, where we would say, oh, it's implemented and we understand all the pitfalls. And uh, th th I really prefer to have things implemented before we standardize them. Okay, uh, let, let, let me phrase the use case a bit differently. Um, is any, are, are any of these use cases urgent enough to make the people who would use it um, actually actually use it and not only just use it as a notational hint or use it in the term in the sense that they need implementations for it well the the alternative is always to convert the abnf into regex yes. <laughs> and actually have a tool that does that but it, it's not uh, it's not good uh, i cannot recommend that at the moment Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, I, I mean, we, we have lots of ABNF in, in the ITF, and I'd, I'd yeah. rather pave a way where people can say, yes, we can use the existing ATA, a, ABNF uh, for the text parts of, of my protocol and, and CDDL for the structural uh, parts, and uh, th that comes up all the time. Mm -hmm. So no, nobody is hurt by not having it, but it's, uh, it's a much less desirable state than having it. Yeah. By the way, I found out what, what I changed. The implementation status uh, part is new. <laughs> so that, that's ex where I exactly say that .cat and .plus now have two implementations and .feature has one implementation as, and is being used. Mm -hmm. But on, on the large scheme of things, the, the, the point probably stays that um, if we need at least those parts and the uh, and don't get traction on the others, then splitting it by something like April uh, would, in my opinion, be a good idea. It's really hard to predict when those implementations will be ready. I think we can put it on waiting for implementation and, and maybe putting it on um, some interim after content and make the point and see what's the status at that point. Yeah, or we could sp just split it now and proceed and 
uh, well, essentially be able to progress uh, dot feature and and yeah, dot cat dot plus. Mm. So when when you say that that um, that the dependent project um, wants to be done by this year, does this mean um, past its own working group last call by this year, or past IESG uh, last call, or pa like published RFC? Well, again, I have to look it up, but uh, okay. it's something like October done is is approximately the the objective. Let me look it up. Groups art ASDF about September twenty twenty one publication requested. Okay, then I think we should aim for the same timeline for this and that. Do we expect any any complications for the, for the rest of the document proceeding without ABNF? Because if not, then then splitting some time, as I said, around April is probably fast enough. But if you have better data points or expect expect complications, and we can of course um, make this earlier. No, I don't expect complications. Okay. Then let's wait for one more more interim to and call and ask 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 implementers for if if there's anyone who could in a timely fashion um, provide implementation feedback before we do the split. Sounds good. Okay. Anything more on this? Because I've seen I see Michael has joined us, so we could proceed to the next topics. Um, so just to repeat what I. <laughs> um, so what? Um, just to repeat what I've said earlier. Um, the uh, working group adoption calls are looking good for for file magic and network address so without um kind of uh, anticipating too much i think we can start working on this on this um at least at least in in discussion parts so there um there have been a few questions on the mailing list on the topic of what do we need uh, in terms of um why we are the why are the particular um, numbers chosen in terms of for file magic? I think this this has been answered. Um, Michael, is there anything that you would need in terms of input from the working group uh, on on progressing file magic or later network addresses? Um, so I think that the only important part. I hope I, you can hear me. Um, I think for. For file magic, we just need the agreement that we want to have a C bar sequence and a wrapped, um, and that we said we wanted a new uh, tag for the C bar sequence place five five seven nine nine. As far as I can tell, there's nothing five five seven five five seven nine. Um, anything would work because the last byte is not if as long as it's in that area, it's not a valid Unicode. Second byte. Um, but um, uh, I guess the other test is whether it's something else, but I don't think it is, and I've, I've kind of checked that already. No other obvious file number. Well, 55800 five, would be an obvious number for me. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, 800 or 98 or whatever you want, yeah. In any, any direction, it's totally arbitrary. Um, what I did look up was that numbers in that air range are, 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 are three byte would be three byte UTF eight, except the second byte is not valid. It must start with two the two ones. Um, uh, anyway, so this range does not have it in that area. 
so it would not be a valid UTF-8 encoding. And I think that's about it, right? There's not really a lot else to say about it. I think um, the, the 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 property that we, that we are, that uh, the original tag aim for was to be um, invalid in all the UTF uh, all the Unicode encodings, including UTF-16 and UTF-32. Okay, well I'll check UTF-16. I didn't do that. Um, and see if that if that if that isn't whether it's invalid in that too. Um, mm -hmm. that. Well, I did, and, and that's why we selected that range. Yep. So. I figure it probably, you know, unless there's some weirdness where, you know, even our odd bytes are valid, I think it's probably mm -hmm. uh, good. I will check the UTF. Do you, do you think the document needs to document this fact that it's how it is that it's not how it was checked? I think it's good practice to show how we came up with not, to, to document the process of how we came up with the numbers and what properties they have. But just point to a five five seven nine nine because that says uh, yeah, but why it, it's but, that number. But it doesn't really say what checks we made. It just says it it's does. not a UTF. Well, it just says it's not a it UTF. Does. It doesn't say okay. The, the third paragraph of uh, section three four six says that. All right, I'll read it again. Um, and then on the topic of. IP address tags, if you want to go to that, there was some quest for do we want ability to um, uh, be able to tag entire array of them. And I'm going to say that I'm indifferent. Not, I don't have that use, um, but I understand that other people might. That, that would, um, unless I've missed the mail, that would be a good kind of standalone thread topic for the mailing list. Is are there any applications for? And if nobody if nobody speaks up, it's probably better to go for the easy thing. Yeah, and and so for the for the person that wants to have an array of prefixes, um. So like cider plus a prefix, um, if they have many thousands of them, um, then it's quite likely that they have a fair bit of overlap um, in the pre in the initial parts, um, and that they may also wish to sort them by longest to shortest, in which case there may be better in code and. Um, Michael, I've lost you after there may be better encodings. Yeah, so there may be a better encoding, like for instance, you, 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 could, uh, you could certainly not use integers by doing deltas on the prefix length, but you, but you may also, you can also avoid repeating the, the, you know, 64 bits of the initial part of the prefix, which you're changing all the time, the rest of it. Um, mm -hmm. so that may just... They'd just be better off doing other things is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that, that may actually be a bit of uh, over-optimizing here. I mean, it's supposed to, to be simple. Uh, so I'm not sure that, that uh, coming up with that, a prefix that someone, commercial scheme. I'm actually saying that someone who has thousands of prefixes that they want to be able to store more efficiently is probably, is probably going to the, the, our our simple compressed seaboard is probably going to do a really good job on that, and um, maybe that solves the problem. Anyway, that's all I have about that. I will start a thread on that question. Thank you. Um, if there's nothing more on this topic, 
Um, then, Carsten, you mentioned the time issue. Um, yeah, so I, I went ahead and uh, did another version of the uh, time tab tag document. Um, right now, we, we are getting more and more requests out of the attestation environment, RATS working group, and so on, for, for how to, to put time into these uh, data structures. And they, they need a little bit more than, than uh, uh, tag one, so the timetable tag document uh, seemed appropriate, uh, but they also need things out of existing RFCs like 3161 and the precision time protocol stuff uh, um, and so on. So we added some of that, and uh, th that's one aspect. We probably have to run this document by the TikTok uh, working group before, or, or during last call at least, but yes. probably before. Um, and uh, we have to make sure it actually solves the problems that, that the RATS uh, people uh, are having. Uh, but I think otherwise uh, we, we are in pretty good shape. Um, and uh, I would expect that there will be documents uh, that are going forward that, that use this uh, relatively soon. So I think it, it's time to take this off the back burner and, and put it on the front burner and put it into the process. Mm -hmm. What what this on the rat have? I missed some words. They, they just need a little bit more information about uh, the quality of, of the time tag. So oh. if somebody tells you that this happened at 17.05, uh, you really want to know how, how sure are they about that? And what's the, the um, accuracy or the uncertainty about that time? And that's what we added. And actually, I took the opportunity to fill in the other two tags, duration and period. Uh, so that, that's very short text because it's, it's kind of obvious how to do this. Um, but of course, that will need some scrutiny. So that's probably a good point um, in time to ask um, people in the working group to have a look at this because at some point we will want to discuss whether this should be a, become a working group document and for that should, people should have read it. Yeah. So from, from my point of view, this is now uh, getting ready for an adoption call because it's no longer a, a big uh, Swiss cheese. Mm -hmm. But of course, you can always add things to that uh, later. So we have to discuss uh, what we, we have a registry and what is going to be the registry policy. But that's something that can easily be um, that, that doesn't need to be fully solved before um, at the point this uh, this is asked to be adopted into a working group. Right, unless somebody says that that uh, they are absolutely opposed to uh, working on this in this working group, unless the registry issue is resolved. But I, I hope that is not the case. Wouldn't expect that. Okay, sounds like we have some we have good stuff to read. Any other business someone wants to bring up? So what, what are the items for two weeks from now? Um, I don't have them off my head yet. Um, okay. Still got still got to prepare that list. Two weeks from now is ICF. Yes. Okay. Not an interview. <laughs> um, but uh, but asking um, but um, get, getting getting around. Um, Asking asking about adoption of this document is something that I could easily see being on that list. Sounds good. Yeah, we'll uh, draft a um, 
an agenda and then we will send it to the mailing list and get more input or anything needs to be added or yeah agendas are due today yeah i know <laughs> Dra draft agendas are due today yeah, yeah, so sure. we're doing that and then getting yeah. more input do you, do you have to discipline yourself francesca if you miss it <laughs> not yet <laughs> i guess during the atf week where i'll, I'll be uh you know both roles at the same time but well, chair to Wednesday. What, when is the plenary? Is there a plenary on the agenda? But I think this time both me and Barry will be um, uh, like overlapping the whole week because there is a lot of overlaps also in, in uh, art working groups. So we will both acting so that we can follow all the groups. Yeah. Well, okay then. Um, in this case, um, see you all in um, uh, in online. And uh, Francesca, if you have a few minutes, then we could uh, we could can we could um, keep working yes. on basically exactly that. Thanks, everyone, and see you there. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.